Good evening. Very welcome to our first live stream, John's and mine anyway, and uh, from the clock tower in St Pancras Station, which is an amazing building. And uh, thanks very much for tuning in. And before I say anything else, I want to thank also John, of course, who is sitting at the piano, and um, also behind the scenes, Sophie Sparks and Adam Bonzer, who are actually making this possible, because we would just sit here, maybe playing and singing to a very select audience. But um, because of these two, we are able to do it live today via the internet, completely exciting times. And I hope you are getting excited about the contents of the music. It's a really interesting, I hope, um, mix of songs and arias. Thanks also to Peter Tompkins, who's hired the space out to us, who's owning this beautiful, amazing space. And uh, you will find a link to the programme in your description, video description, either Facebook or YouTube. And everything foreign is either explained or translated, depending on the length of the song. If my English is not clear enough, I apologise in advance. You have to look up the lyrics if you haven't understood me. But I hope you might. And uh, I hope you enjoy the programme, which is very varied, partly because I thought a live stream might be best if we have sort of small groups of songs or a couple of aria, oratorio arias sprinkled in as well. And we're going to start with a short group of three aria antiche, Italian, and all of them loosely to do with love, having unrequited love in the first one, Tulo Sai, you know how much I love you, cruel one, and the second one sort of gives an explanation, but it's not a connected piece, it's not even the same composition, a composer who wrote it. Um, I'm explaining to my, the shepherd who loves me so much that I'm very sorry if he thinks I need to exclusively love him back. Sorry, I, that won't happen. And but I'm very happy that you love me all the same. And the third one is sort of me reminiscing on how love has me in its clutches and how life is difficult. Um, having love pinch you, even chew you, which is a bit disgusting, but anyway, I hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started.
Going to uh, Giza is going to sing two um, uh, oratorio arias. Uh, the first needs no introduction. Uh, Rejoice from Handel's Messiah, which is uh, very much uh, just a, a extremely uh, upbeat aria that could be a part of an opera. Um, is literally very just rejoice. It is all about. Uh, followed by Est uh, Incarnatus Est from Mozart's Mass in C Minor. Um, this is a very kind of uh, special to Mozart's heart as uh, when he returned to Salzburg from Vienna uh, in order to introduce his new wife Constanza to his disapproving father in an attempt to win, her, win him over um, he wrote uh, the Mass in C minor. Um, Constanza herself premiered it in Salzburg and it has been performed every year ever since that. So Gisela is now going to sing a Rejoice uh, from Messiah, followed by Et Incarnatus Est from Mozart's Mass in C minor.
Isabella Colbran was a very interesting character. Uh, she was at one stage premier uh, soprano of her day. She grew up in the. Uh, her father was a, a well noted musician in the court at Madrid. Uh, she then moved to become the prima donna at the theatre in Naples, where she came across a uh, famous impresario, Domenico. Um, Bowery, and he commissioned lots of operas by Bellini and Donizetti, um, but also uh, was involved in, in gambling parlours as well. Uh, Isabella became uh, quite fond of gambling, uh, and she was doing quite well professionally. Uh, she also had a lot of family money, so she had plenty of opportunity to, to use it in the gambling. Uh, she then uh, became involved romantically with Rossini and married him. Um, she, her career was uh, short-lived um, and kind of finished in about 1824 when she did a fairly disastrous concert in London. Um, and she kind of retired fairly soon after that to Bologna where she uh, continued to gamble her money away. Rossini still sent her money as well as having family money um, and she died aged 60. Um, in about 1842, I think. Anyway, um, she also composed four sets of songs, and uh, this is from one set of those songs, I do believe. Excuse me. Anyway, hope you enjoy. All right. <laughs>
we're going to switch back to oratorio now and um, doing a slightly earlier piece again by uh, Felix Mendelssohn and I think it's very well known to you as well, the beginning of the second half of, or second part of Elijah, Hear Ye Israel. Oh 
you very much. And we're going to continue, it will be dubbed the second half. It's more German, I'm afraid, so it's... Uh, I chose these four songs as a sort of sequence, even though they're not a cycle. They are um, first a late girl who, about a girl who's in demand of her father, wants her to rock the baby's cradle, and the mum wants her to tell her the secrets of the girls and promise her, make big promises about what they give her for it, three uh, geese egg, goose eggs and three sort of roasted birds, but she knows they promised me three, but what I'm going to get is one, they're going to eat the other two. But the last verse is about her lover and how he promises her three kisses, if only she thought about him in the time they were away. And she knows those three kisses won't be all that she's getting. And in the second song, she's on, this, on her way to him, that's my idea anyway. Um, and the third song, Die Nacht, is all about how night changes all, takes all the colours of things. And there's a little bit of anxiety about how night might also take your lover from you. And the last one is the two lovers come uh, back united again in another moment of bliss. And uh, I've read that Strauss is, yeah, has been told that he doesn't have to be taught harmony, which is the chords you choose to go with the melody. And if you just enjoy the amazing chords that he's sometimes, the shifts he is taking, just sort of relish it. Um, that is something I always do when I sing them. And I hope you enjoy them as much as we are.
next Giza and I are going to be performing uh, three songs um, by Madeline Dring um, in the title of The Enchantment uh, Echoes, and we also start with My True Love Hath the Heart. Uh, Madeline Dring was an English uh, composer born in Hornsey. She studied at Royal College of Music uh, and under Herbert Howells. Um, she married the uh, principal oboist of the uh, LSO, Roger Lord, and um, had a very individual compositional style. Um, I won't say too much more apart from uh, uh, on a BBC programme about her, uh, this sums up her compositional style. Uh, Madeline's Dring's gift was for assimilating what she liked from other composers and then producing something utterly original, something entirely the work of Madeline Dring and none other. So uh, that was uh, her compositional style. Modern settings, these, of old poems by um, English poems. Thank you. 
We're going to switch language once more to French uh, for the last three songs of our performance today. And um, Debussy, all three of them, and the first one is another devotion of love type of theme. I'm presenting gifts to my lover. And this song and the next one after, which is to, um, the Chevaux de Bois, they have a sort of funny history with me because when I, as a pianist, it, uh, went to the Guildhall School for the audition, Green, the first one we're going to do, was one of the set accompaniments. And I loved it so much that when I also added singing, I had to sing that as well because I loved singing and we were always taught to play and learn the singer's part as well as our own. And uh, the Chevaux de Bois was then past, part of my final recital. So I relish always the beginning of that, which is uh, all about a funfair, the wooden horses of the carousel turning, and you can hear some tunes, I think, that make that very vivid. And then night falls and everything calms down. And these are the first two, and I'm going to speak again before the last one. Thank you. 
the end of that song, at the end of that song, the church bell rang once more in a, in a sad sort of way. And of course, we are the clock tower, not quite a church, we have a train station, but it's the clock is quite a sort of ringing, the bell ringing is a nice little analogy here. We are staying with a sort of slightly fantasy world, and um, it's Piron who has come down his mime and has just finished his performance with Hanukkah and he's on his way home. The girl is trying to make fun of him but he communicates with the moon. The moon is winking at him and it's a nice little encounter. And it was the person mentioned here was um, Jean Gaspard de Bureau who was a famous mime in Debussy's sort of contemporary times. <laughs> information on the live stream uh, description as well and thanks so much for those who have already done so that was really much appreciated and I appreciate you all for tuning in and for staying with as much as you wanted to but hopefully a lot of it and you can still share the link the video will remain active even after the live stream is over so thanks once more and thank you to John again and uh, Adam and Sophie very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.